oxidative phosphorylation. So here we are on the inner mitochondrial membrane, the site of oxidative phosphorylation. As you can see, we have four protein complexes which transport electrons and pump protons to create a chemiosmotic gradient, allowing the formation of ATP through the ATP synthase enzyme. In this production, a range of families have kindly decided to star and take on the following role. Firstly, welcome the cat family, playing complex NADH dehydrogenase. The koalas are complex to succinate dehydrogenase, and the fluffy fuzzy hedgehogs are being ubiquinone. The rabbits play everyone's favourite, complex 3 cytochrome C reductase. And bringing up the last of the complexes are the dogs, with complex 4 cytochrome C oxidase. The ATPA synthase complex stars next, then here are its substrates, ADP and phosphate, and finally its product, ATP. Now some supporting acts. The penguins represent iron sulfur centres. Here are the badgers, representing all the different types of cytochrome. And don't forget their important cofactors. Heme, shown by the bears dressed in dramatic red. Here comes the NAD plus complex, identified by Mr. Reindeer, who can only carry one proton. Followed closely by FAD plus, driven by Mr. Bear, and he can carry two protons. Here is the fabulous flavin mononucleotide, Mr. Squirrel! Now look at those sweet little protons dressed in pink. Two baby penguins make an oxygen molecule, and last but by no means least, the piglets represent copper atom. So we begin at complex one, which contains flavin mononucleotide and iron sulfur centres. Ooh look, here comes NADH with its two electrons and one proton. He gives the electrons to the complex, and they are transported to the fabulous flavin mononucleotide, who so kindly passes them on to the iron sulfur centres. Each electron then combines with a proton from the mitochondrial matrix, and they are passed on to the fluffy fuzzy ubiquinone. Meanwhile, the complex does some proton pumping, and four protons are passed to the intermembrane space. And on to complex 2, where something similar is occurring. FADH2 comes along and donates two electrons to the complex, which are again passed along to iron sulfur centres. FADH2 deposits his two protons, and they combine with the two electrons, as in complex 1, and are passed to fluffy fuzzy ubiquinone. They are passed on to complex 3, and to the heme group in cytochrome B, followed by the heme group in cytochrome C1. The two protons from fluffy fuzzy ubiquinone are pumped into the intermembrane space. The two electrons pass through more iron sulfur centres and are finally passed to the heme prosthetic group in cytochrome C. Two protons from the matrix are also pumped, so a total of four protons enter the intermembrane space. Tensions build as we reach complex 4. The first electron is passed from cytochrome C to the first copper centre in complex 4, copper A. They are then passed to heme A, followed by heme A3. One electron remains at this heme group, reducing the iron 3 plus in it to iron 2 plus. The other electron is passed to the other copper centre, copper B. An oxygen molecule then acts as the final electron acceptor in the electron transport chain. Here, for simplicity, an, ox an atom of oxygen is shown entering the complex, as well as two protons which combine with the two electrons to form a molecule of water, whereas in reality an oxygen molecule would enter and two water molecules would be produced. Finally, two protons are pumped into the intermembrane space. The result of this proton pumping is a proton concentration gradient, and the energy associated with it allows the formation of ATP, driven by this proton motive force. Protons cannot leave the intermembrane space, apart from through the ATP synthase complex. Protons enter from the intermembrane space into the enzyme one at a time, and as one enters, another leaves into the mitochondrial matrix. Once three protons have entered, enough energy is released to form ATP from ADP and phosphate. This occurs until the proton gradient is equal on both sides of the membrane, but in living systems, this gradient is maintained by the electron transport chain. And that, ladies and gentlemen, rabbits and foxes, is the process of oxidative phosphorylation.